to uh, the Mayor Ricky Pratt's program. Here today is December the 19th, 2011. And uh, Ricky, uh, glad to have you along. I tell you what, we've been uh, talking about having you in. Glad that you came in today. Well, you know, I, I sort of miss being out here in front of the uh, TV cameras. I've uh, sort of been laying low, letting, letting things get up and running here at the city uh, public TV station. So I'm glad to be here. I'll tell you what, there's been a lot going on. A lot been going on in the city and around the area. And uh, let's just get right to it. Now, one thing that, uh, that I have been very, very encouraged with for the year 2011 here in Granbury, Texas, Hood County, is our economic growth. And I know you wanted to talk on that a little bit about some of the businesses that have came in and some of the uh, ongoings that have been going on here. Well, you know, in this past uh, calendar year, we've seen uh, quite a bit going on here in the city. One item that we've got going on is the airport expansion project. It's actually scheduled and still on track for opening in 2015. Oh, wow. And quite honestly, that's not that far away. Right around the corner. And, and so their property acquisition is taking place on that as we speak. And uh, we're waiting for TxDOT Aviation to move forward with that. We're actually in the final phases of uh, moving forward with it. We've also got the Northeast Loop 567 underway, where they are property acquisition is actually taking place. Uh, we're not just talking about it. You know, this has been a project that's been on the book, I know, well over 15 years. Long time. And, and it's uh, basically going to allow people to circumnavigate around the square, coming in from the bridge that just enters uh, commercial 377, which takes you to downtown square area. They will exit off to the right and will be able to go to the Northeast Loop 567, which will eventually interconnect with Highway 51 and the existing Northeast Loop. I'm sorry, Northwest Loop. West Loop. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it should help with uh, truck traffic and people that live on the north side of the square. They won't have to go through the square anymore to get to Abe's Landing or any of the other locations that are north. Of course, with the, with the expansion of that loop, it'll also open avenues and areas for other economic uh, growth, such as uh, other business businesses coming in and being a part of those uh, different areas that are going to be available. Yeah, I don't see it building up uh, so much residential, but more so on the commercial Person. line uh, along that 567 loop. It, it will spur quite a bit of economic growth on that. With that, we hope to see new jobs. Absolutely. Uh, something we definitely need here in Hood County is uh, new jobs. Absolutely. Uh, another thing that I'd like to mention is we do have a, we're speaking about traffic. We had a few traffic uh, progress things take place, one of which was the Plaza Drive extension. It allows people along 377, a back route, to avoid any traffic buildup and traffic congestion on 377. We also had the Meander Road oh, yeah. extension. That flowed along with the HEB building that opened up there at the uh, Luton Ranch property. And that allows a lot of our, uh, that, in fact, that was a city-county joint venture, as was the Plaza Drive extension. And uh, we looked forward to having more such uh, co-mingling of, of projects between the county and the city in the what, future. They should have worked out really well on those pro programs and I, I, the Plaza Drive, I just love it. I used it actually this weekend and I actually even used the one over on Meander and uh, I just think that those those extensions there were much needed and it really opened up a lot of area to the uh, traffic. Yeah, and, and we're going to see more expansion, I'm sure, coming along with the HEB building. Uh, we're already seeing quite a bit of industry, service-oriented businesses are opening up in the strip there. Uh, there's going to be a new bank. There's going to be uh, McDonald's in that area. We've got an uh, insurance agency that's going to open up. We've got a uh, hair and uh, nail salon place that's opening up. So we're seeing a lot of service-oriented businesses taking part of that strip center that's right next to HEB. And across the street, you got the racetrack, and there's another building uh, over on the other side of that corner that's uh, beginning to do some uh, underdevelopment there. Yeah, and that's going to actually be a garage, an auto repair shop. Uh, 
I believe it's a, I don't know the name of the company that they are, but they're a nationwide company, oh, wow. so they're well, well known in, uh, across the Metroplex area and other regions. I want to go back to something you touched on very early, and that is that airport expansion. Mention again how important and, and just basically what that's going to do and what that will open up for the County of Hood and the City of Granbury. By expanding the airport, what we're hope, hoping to see and what we've had approved by TxDOT Aviation is we have a 5,000 foot long runway that is going to be placed down there at the existing airport. It will be a separate uh, runway, separate and above the one that's currently there. What we'll be seeing as a result of that is corporate traffic will be able to fly in and land a corporate jet on our runway. Currently we've got very limited options for uh, airplanes. Uh, we've got a 3100 foot or 3000 foot runway that's currently in place and so getting in the corporate jets it's the, there's no chance they can come in. With a 5000 foot runway they will actually be able to land here fully loaded which means they can exit here fully loaded. They'll have enough runway length to get off the ground with fuel, total fuel with packaging product. My anticipation is we will see industrial growth happen Absolutely. concurrently with the airport expansion. We may not see exactly everything that you've got in the Metroplex area, but the fact that goods can be transported in here, it could market well into the redistribution location as a distribution hub that would cater to the parts that are further to our west and to our south, further down 377. They would be able to fly goods in, redistribute them, and have a, a distribution point that's just outside of the Metroplex, which is more regional, and that's what I hope we will see develop. Well, that, that's exciting because uh, with that expansion, bring able, being able to bring in the, uh, stuff of that nature, it will definitely increase the amount of corporate companies that come here into Granbury and start their business because we all know this is such a fantastic town. Why wouldn't they want to come here? And, and we actually have a lot of corporate officers, CEOs and the such, that live in Granbury proper right now. In fact, a lot of them have come and gotten on the waiting list at the airport for when this happens so that they can get a hangar space for their corporate jets. Right now they're having to fly into Meacham yep. or they're having to fly into Borland Field. And they would love to be able to get their plane landed here and take off from here. And with all of that, you know, Granbury already has just the uniqueness of Granbury. We already have some great businesses here in town. And I know that it's the holiday season. This weekend, as I was doing my travels about, I saw every parking lot on the square just full and bustling with, the, you know, everybody doing their Christmas and holiday shopping and that sort of thing. Here in Granbury, there's really no need to go to the Metroplex for your shopping. You can shop local here and, and get the best of, of, of the best. Well, I think we actually have quite a few uh, local shops that cater to our Christmas present spirit, you know. Uh, in fact, I do all of my Christmas shopping and I want to encourage everybody out there, shop local as much as you can. Uh, by shopping local, we're actually keeping the doors open for that next year when they when they need that money uh, you've got to remember that in general January is a downturn month in fact the first quarter it's tough for businesses to get keep that momentum going keep the doors open uh, and and I have to encourage if you can shop locally please do so and in fact all my Christmas stocking stuffers came local I find some very unique things, especially around the square. I, I even went to Walmart to get a few gifts. And, uh, you know, I don't mind catering to the big box stores. Uh, HEB has little presents that you can get people. We have lots of unique items in this town, and, and I fully want to uh, encourage people to support our local shops and businesses. Of course, also that correlates with our tax base and our tax revenue it goes right into there and I know that we've done pretty well in 2011 haven't we? We've done very well in fact our overall sales tax rate is up 10% over what it was last year and last year 10% over what it was the prior year so we're doing very good as far as sales tax now as far as property ad valorem values property taxes are down 
basically because of the fact that the evaluation made by the appraisal district is down. And so as a result, there's less monies in the coffer from ad valorem taxes. As far as the hotel occupancy tax, that is up 40%. 40%. That says that we're getting lots of people at the hotels. Now, whether it's due to an outage over at Comanche Peak, whether it's due to the events that are taking place in Granbury, it all adds up to an increase of the hotel occupancy tax. And those tax dollars are used to help spur on tourism. And those dollars help generate more dollars over a period of time. You know, speaking of, of venues and, and the fact that we've got a new venue that just recently opened up, the Rio Brazos. Oh, wow. Uh, the Rio Brazos Music Hall is underway. They opened up in November, had a big concert with Willie Nelson kicking it off, and they have something scheduled every week. And even into the upcoming year, they've got stuff scheduled. They're a great place for lunch, even. They, they, had, they told me that the word's not really out on the street, but they are open for lunch most of the days of the week. Absolutely, and it's a great place to eat. The, the chef that they have there is just phenomenal, and they do a great job. And then you can learn more when, when you go down there for a nice lunch. You can find out about all those other activities that they have there. And uh, that will also add in to the tax revenue here locally because people will be coming over to stay the night and to, you know, they'll make a special trip into Granbury, maybe even include the whole weekend exactly. shopping here in Granbury. So it, that venue, Rio Brazos, is phenomenal for this area. You know, this place, Granbury, is a great place for the staycationers. Oh, yes. Because we are within 30-minute drive out of the Metroplex, 45 minutes from most areas in Fort Worth. And for those people to make their way down here and help out our economy, that's a win-win for everybody locally because it keeps those employees there in the restaurants busy. It keeps our businesses open. You know, it, the trickle-down effect of tourism is still there. Granted, it may be one of our major industries for this area, and we need to work on getting some additional ones. But that's going to come. I, I anticipate that the growth at the airport, the airport expansion, should generate some industry jobs the fact that there has been an industrialization zoning take place out at the Commerce Center, which is adjacent to there along the 567 corridor, that should also spur some industry and manufacturing type jobs, which are not your low income paying jobs. They're more up to scale, more, more on par with what people are currently driving into the Metroplex to go seek out that work. Something also that happened that was very, very along those lines is the fact that we have now Weatherford College here in Granbury that has uh, uh, been added in and people who want to further their education and then also hold a job here in the area. That could bring in also additional people, make Granbury more attractive. Well, you know, Weatherford College is uh, just now starting their second semester, I believe it is, and they're already talking about they are up well over their numbers of last year. Yes. And as a result, they are expanding their curriculum. And so if you're an adult and you need some continuing education, please go by Weatherford College's office. They're over there by the, on uh, what's the name of that street over there? Jones Street. Jones Street. Street. Jones Street, yes. And uh, you can visit with them in their office and their admissions uh, office there and get some more information about their curricula that they've added for the adult continuing education. And if you're a student looking to continue your education, you don't have to travel all the, all the way to Weatherford. That's right. You can get your primary subjects taken right here okay. in Granbury and beat the traffic. I guarantee you it's still a tough drive to get into Weatherford from Granbury. It is, it is. And, and you know, how exciting that is that a lot of the uh, high schoolers now are even talking about the fact that we have that Weatherford College right there and that they can get some of their college credit hours right here in Granbury, Texas. And, and, uh, and again, that just flows in with everything that we also talked about. Tourism. Wanted to talk really briefly about, well, as long as we want to, about the Granbury Opera House uh, uh, renovation that's going on. I know they, they're having, I believe, their last shows are just now coming up with the uh, company that's there now. And then the renovation is just it's full steam on right now. 
Yeah, it's uh, if anybody has traveled up to the square, you'll notice that the Quonset hut is no more. The uh, ribs and the structure have actually been removed, and we are starting the demolition of the concrete base. Once that is cleared out, we will be laying utilities. There will be new utilities brought underground in the area to facilitate the south side of the square, something that has actually been on the book for over 20 years. The sewer and water pipelines that are there are in very bad shape and they definitely need some improvements along that line. And there's a lot of electrical uh, lines that are up overhead. They will be removed and taken down underground. New services will be brought up behind the buildings on the south side of the square. And it will dress up that back alleyway tremendously. New structure is planned for the uh, where the Quonset hut stood. A uh, new structure will be going in which will accommodate the backstage necessa necessaries that the Opera House requires in order to house their uh, dressing rooms, preparation area, those kind of things. You have to support the Opera House Theater with more space than its original footprint. And by utilizing that Quonset Hut area, they will have a backstage area that will accommodate those kind of things. Because a show can't just happen if you just put it on the stage. You have to have that support area, that support structure for the actors and the crew. I am so glad to see that going on because uh, when people talk about Granbury, if I'm out and about in the Metroplex area and I mention that I am from Granbury, oh yeah, we visited the Opera House. We want to come back. It's been a long time. And with this renovation, boy, it's going to be even more attractive for people to come in and enjoy that facility. Oh, I anticipate this facelift to just be the beginning of the renovation process. I anticipate a red carpet treatment when it first opens up. Now, we used to bring spotlights down onto the square to mm -hmm. announce the opening of grand opening of, of our shows. That. And we'd have the searchlights out there on the square spanning the sky. It was a big to-do back in the early 70s and uh, mid-70s mm -hmm. when I was a part of the Opera House. And I look forward to seeing that reawakening and awareness of our community that we do have a jewel, a gem, right here in our own downtown square. Absolutely. Something that you just don't get anywhere, just right here in Granbury, Texas. You know, there's something always happening around here. Uh, the courthouse is... Uh, pretty much all fully uh, renovated. Uh, if people have not been down there, I encourage them to go down there. That courthouse is just phenomenal looking. And uh, now when we have our festivities, I know that uh, last year during the 4th of July, there's a lot of construction going on and some people just didn't get the full effect. They come back this year, they're gonna get to enjoy the full effect and it's gonna be impressive. Yeah, the county did a great job on the renovation of the courthouse and the decorations that were placed there uh, by way of the HGMA all around the square, it looks beautiful. And, and right now you can actually walk into the courthouse. It's a fully functional operational facility again, something that hasn't been for at least two years. And the county judge is going to be in that location. I think uh, that's where probate court is going to be held. Mm -hmm. His staff is going to be located down there if they're not already so. It's my understanding they were moving furniture not too yep. many days ago and that they are in operation as we speak. So it's very encouraging around the square. The parking lot's been repaved. Uh, Beautiful. It looks great. You know, uh, there was a joint effort by the city and the county to get some plumbing in in preparation of expanding the electrical capabilities exactly. around the square. That will facilitate our upcoming events. Our outdoor events will have better electrical service. One thing that was a detractment uh, during last 4th of July activity was the square actually shut down due to the fact that it was so hot and there was so much current draw on the electric right. that it shut down the transformer that feeds the square. With this renovation, we will actually see an improvement to where we will be able to handle more electrical needs on the square. And that means a better outdoor event. You know, we have so many outdoor events that bring the tourists down here to our community. And HGMA puts on several of them. The Chamber of Commerce does the uh, 4th of July event. That's their big breadwinners. That keeps those organizations up and running from time to time through the year. And it's a good plus for our community. It's a very good supportive effort on expanding our tourism dollars.
I tell you what, 2011, very exciting, and I guess the arrow would be pointing up for Granbury, Texas, and uh, for the area, uh, 2012, just as exciting. I know there's some elections coming up, and uh, you know we'll see some new faces coming in and everything, but with the same common goal to make Granbury the best that it can be. Well, that's true. And, and speaking of elections, uh, the normal May-held city of Granbury election is now being moved to November of 2012, which means that current members of the council, myself included, will be serving up from May until November of our current terms. So it's given a little bit more length, but it's going to work in conjunction with the general election that's held in November, the first Tuesday of November. And this was mandated by a federal law that was passed and the state went along with it and the cities had to follow suit if they wanted to be a part of it. So, and, and it, it should serve the public. It should get more people out, more people involved in the local elections, which is when you as a citizen have your best voice because at a local level, you've got more voice in the election and the outcome and the decisions made by the city than you do in the national election. Remember, in the national election, you're one of millions. In a city election, you're one of thousands. So it's something that needs to be brought out. The attrition rate is very bad for most municipalities in local elections. It's an average of only 10% during a municipal election. And, uh, and even less. So by doing something along this line, we're actually able to produce more of a general outcome of people coming to our community and voicing their voice during those elections. Yeah, and they should get out and do that because uh, you know you want your you want your local community because that's where you can get your voice out a lot clearer and a lot better. Speaking of that, we have a beautiful facility here, City Hall. And, uh, you know, we have a, a council meeting and you have open mic. And I know that you want to encourage people to come out for that, uh, for that activity as well. Yes, open mic is held on a regular basis at the first regularly held me meeting over at the city council chamber. You as a citizen have a chance to voice your opinions, your thoughts, your ideas as to where, what direction you think city council should take. You have three minutes to speak to council. The council can't even talk back at you. So it's your chance to actually voice your opinion and state what you want to before the city council members. Hopefully that item that you bring forward and that thought that you bring forward will be placed upon an upcoming agenda and then discussion will roll from there. So it's the citizen's way of getting an idea out there what they think is an improvement for the city bring it forward. Uh, don't, don't sit back and talk about it to your neighbors. Let the city council members know that it's of concern to you and the city council will put it onto a future agenda for action. Absolutely. That's how things get moved in, along. Once again, it's your way of getting your voice heard and that's that our first city council meeting held each month of the year. Well, I'll tell you what, I certainly appreciate you coming in today, Ricky and uh, sharing that information with uh, all of our viewers and uh, let's make this a regular event. Well, all I'm looking for is the uh, invite and I'll make it a part of the well, calendar. Well, you have it. You've enjoyed the Mayor's Report here on Granbury TV. Have a safe and happy holiday season.